Hello, this is Daniel from Creative Reuse. I'm going to show you some examples of how to make creative new greeting cards from used greeting cards. I hope this tutorial inspires you to make your own remixed greetings. It's December, so I decided to make Christmas cards, but you can use these methods for any occasion. Step one is to look through your cards and find the ones that you like and set them aside. Look inside the cards as well, since you can reuse the printed messages and graphics. Step two is to gather supplies and tools you might need. I've brought out glue, various tapes, regular and fancy scissors, a pencil, paper punches, and ribbon. Feel free to add things like stickers, buttons, and other embellishments. All of these things I was able to find at Creative Reefs. And now the fun can begin. I chose this card with the gold rectangle to use as a frame for an image that will go inside the card. Using a craft knife and ruler, I cut along the inside of the gold line. I want to keep the leaves that overlap the two corners, so I will carefully cut around them. Making cards can be a fun family activity that doesn't cost much money. The possibilities are endless, and you really can't make any mistakes. Even if you do mess up, say you cut through something you wanted to use, the materials are not precious. Just find another image or chunk of text. There's plenty of used cards in the world to choose from. With the center of the frame cut out, I can fit the image of a sleigh from another card's front and side. Using the frame as a guide, I trim the edges of the sleigh piece. Since the sleigh was the front of another card, I trim the side where the fold was to get a nice clean edge, or not. <laughs> That's why scissors are great. The sleigh piece is trimmed and fits, but I noticed some spots on the frame edge to clean up. I want to cover the text above the sleigh with something more fitting to the inside of the card. I'm just playing around with other cards to see what might make sense. The first thing I cut out was too big, but I found something better for that space in another card. These gold hearts and X's kind of match the gold around the sleigh and adds a nice touch to the side, but also are a great detail for the signature area. Since the shiny gold surface might be hard to write on and it might obscure a signature, I also cut out a blank white space to add to the bottom right corner. Now that all the elements have been cut out and arranged, it's time to secure the pieces in place. I'm using double-sided tape to secure all my pieces. It's a good idea to burnish the tape down before peeling the backing off. This helps get a good bond and make sure your cutouts don't fall off later. I'm using a plastic letter opener to burnish, but a bone folder, credit card, or even a spoon could be used. Our first card is finished. Now we can move on to making another card. For the second card, I've selected a few images with the idea of placing the black cat from the Halloween card inside the red and silver wreath. I want the animals below on the Believe card to seem like they're looking up at the wreath cat in the sky. I first cut out the cat to get a better idea if it will fit inside the wreath. To easily cut the center from the wreath, 
I use the knife to slice an X through the paper, making more room for the scissors. The cat fits and seems happy about it, but I think the cat's head might get cold up there in the sky, and I found the perfect hat. I'm just going to finish cutting out this wreath, and then cut out the cat's hat. With the hat cut out, I can secure the cat to the wreath with clear tape on the back and then use some double-sided tape to secure the hat to the cat. Pro tip, the point of a craft knife is helpful in removing the tiny corners of the tape backing. I cut out the word believe because I want to use it, but the wreath and cat We'll cover it. If this wreath were really floating in the sky, it would be behind the tops of the trees, so I use the knife to cut just around the tops of the trees so the wreath can slip in behind them. With my pieces cut and arranged, I once again use a double-sided tape to secure them. If you don't have this type of tape, you can also use glue to secure your cutouts. This part is done, but it's just a single piece and needs to be secured to a folded card. I remove the folded over front of the zebra card and attach my cat wreath to the remaining part. I could cut the folded piece down to the height of the top edge of the cat wreath, but decide to add a background using the front of another card. Using the top of the folded piece as a guide, I trace out the background. With all these parts cut out, I can get out the old double-sided tape and get all my pieces stuck in position. Since the cat wreath part is narrow, I make sure to line its left edge up to the folded edge of the backer piece and then trim the right edge to make everything flush. The inside had a paper liner which left a torn area on the right side. Decorative tapes are an attractive way to cover this up and its graphic quality make it look intentional. I layer two tapes over the rough patch and cut off any overhang. With that complete, I add a greeting. To finish the front, I use a paper punch and then glue those little pieces on. To finish the card, I added some text inside that goes with the word believe on the front. For the third card, I kept it simple and found some images I liked, cut them out, and glued them together. The front of the black and white card is a textured surface and glitter, so here I used glue for better adhesion. I cut the child from one card, then the Christmas tree from another. I then used a paper punch to add some blue stars.
For the inside, I cut out printed text from other cards and secured them using washi tape. For the final card project, I wanted to do something slightly different. I first got all of my pieces cut out and arranged. I used one piece of tape on the middle of the backs of the cowboy and Christmas tree pieces, secured them in place on my folded card, and went to my sewing machine. I carefully stitched around each piece starting and finishing on the folded side of the card. Since the tape was in the center of each cutout, I knew I wouldn't sew through it and damage my needle. You could just as easily hand sew portions of your card if you don't have a sewing machine. I covered the back of the stitch side with a coordinating panel from duplicate use anniversary cards that just happened to be in the same bag. I trimmed the overhang and added a few more cutouts to the front. Luckily I had punched out these snowflakes and can use them to hide my goofy corner stitches. That's the beauty of this kind of project. If you mess up, you can just cover it up and no one will ever know. I let one of the snowflakes overhang the top edge to balance the hat that hangs over the left side of the card. I then used a scrap of paper to clean off any glue on the back of the snowflake. On the inside, I placed a blank piece of paper and some text from another card on the right side with double-sided tape. I then glued the remaining punched out snowflakes to the left side. I need to cover the back panel since I made this card by flipping another card inside out. A blank card back is perfect for this. Once secured, I trim the excess paper. I also added a piece of ribbon across the top of the inside with a small amount of glue. And now the last card is complete. I hope you enjoyed this creative reuse tutorial and have been inspired to make your own creatively reused cards.